Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably familiar with a couple of videos that I released a few months ago. The first one did Canonical make a mistake killing off Unity and Canonical let the bloodletting begin. So Canonical is definitely going through some major changes with regard to its corporate structure. And the big thing that's happened recently, of course, if you haven't been aware, is that Canonical has decided to kill off the Unity interface and go ahead and work with GNOME, or GNOME, depending on how you want to pronounce it, instead of developing in-house the Unity interface. Now, it was a reasonable part of their budget to develop Unity, but it really is difficult to say how much but it looks like Canonical is moving now into cloud services and infrastructure using of course Ubuntu as the core OS so a recent article just came out about actually it isn't an article it's right from Ubuntu itself or Ubuntu depending on how you want to pronounce it once again people get all of in arms if you don't pronounce it right but that's how I pronounce it, Ubuntu, like it or not. Uh, anyway, their Artful Aardvark desktop fit and finish is coming out, and they released this information on August 8th of 2017, looking for assistance from the open source community in general, developers, those who work with GNOME, and are interested in assisting in the development of GNOME to replace Unity in version 17.10. So we're going to see Unity going away. And there's been some mixed response, which we're going to get into in a second. But basically, this is going to take place in London and goes for two days. And if you are interested in going, you do have to fill out a form right here. You would have to be in the area of London, England on August 24th from around 4 to 9 p.m. Now, room is limited, so if this is something you did want to do, you would have to fill the form out and I guess based on your responses, how useful you will be to Ubuntu will determine whether or not they're going to give you a call and have you come on up. So, pretty exciting. But there is some controversy, of course, with this. Now, this article popped up on Slashdot. And there were some really interesting responses here. One person said they paid to screw it up. Now they want help to fix it, and they won't pay for that. Another person responded, no, that's really not what happened what's happening yes unity is a stupid idea and this individual complained here about it what they're saying here is guys we were wrong we're going with gnome but there are some things gnome doesn't do that unity did can you believe that unity might not have done everything wrong and gnome doesn't do everything right they want to make good more open release and asking for help from the community to do that i understand and do agree now the person who put this comment here I'm gonna scroll up so you can see his original post he said well okay this is a different one but kinda of the same thing you broke it you fix it and then he gives a link here and if you follow that link it's actually an article about Mark Shuttleworth's comments this was back in 2010 was having a discussion with another person who was saying when you want to have open source developers that are not getting paid they should have the ability to understand and know and to some extent vote on what's going on with the changes you're putting into your software in this case Ubuntu there's quite a bit of information here check it out if you want but Mark Shuttleworth basically says no, this is not a democracy. Good feedback, good data, always welcome. But we don't vote on design decisions. It is canonical that makes the decisions. So many people feel that 
Canonical's basically saying, okay, we can't afford to develop Ubuntu anymore. Well, Unity, to be specific, the interface. And we would like you to come and help us out for free, but you get no say in the finalized design choices. I find that really interesting. Now, in one respect, it's good that they're asking for input. If you think about it, the cool thing is we hope anyway that it will improve the transition from Ubuntu from Unity to GNOME. It's hard to say if it really will or not, but I, I have a suspicion that it's going to make things better. When you have the input of the community that's using it, you're bound to get a better product depending on whether or not the company Canonical itself is actually going to make use of that input that they get. So that's hard to say. On the other hand, I do agree with some of the commenters here that say, you know, really, you're asking us to come in and fix this problem you have because you're running low on money, on funds, so you're cutting different projects and different chunks of the canonical company out, in this case Unity, and now you want our help to make it better. What do I think developers should do and those that are interested in giving their two cents and making things better? I think they should do it. The fact is, even if you are doing it for free, it, it's really hoped that the product is going to be made better and Ubuntu will still be something that people will want to use and the GNOME interface will be tweaked just enough to make it m as useful as possible to those people who enjoy Ubuntu still. And possibly some of those changes we might see in other distributions if they're useful. If, if we find out that the Ubuntu community really likes those changes, then you may see some of those surface in other distributions, which is a good thing. Many people here on Slashdot have a terrible opinion of GNOME 3. I really like GNOME 3. I think that its usability is really cool. If you're used to Mac OS, then GNOME 3 would be a welcome change. If you're used to Windows-like interfaces, you're probably better off on a KDE-like interface like I'm running right here. So everything is relative. Um, the reason I don't use GNOME and I'm using KDE is because of the scaling. So when I run applications when I'm in KDE, I get much, much better scaling. Uh, and that's important to me. So GNOME does well, but app scaling is still dismal. Now, to be fair, I haven't used Fedora 26 yet, so hopefully there will be some improvements with GNOME. And I'll be really interested in checking out Ubuntu 17.10. Maybe they'll come up with some innovative changes that will make that scaling aspect better. It looks like when I was looking at Fedora 26 recently that the scaling might have been improved, but at the time I was only running it in 1080p, and the real teller of the tale is if you can run it in 4K and you get really nice scaling like this. Unfortunately, I do have to do some manual setting changes in KDE Plasma, but it does work really well. So for me, I, I guess KDE works best. So the whole thing about GNOME being good or bad, I'm not going to say I ignore it, but uh, it really doesn't apply that strongly to me because most of the time I'm using KDE. Again, it's all dependent on what your needs are. So we will see if Ubuntu makes good and they make GNOME better and whether or not we will see some of those setting changes propagate out. It's a matter of political opinion whether you think the open source community should be helping out to make the interface better on a for-profit distribution or if they shouldn't. Curious to hear what you think. Hope you enjoyed this short video. I'm looking forward to seeing you again on the next video. If you really enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. 
if not well you know you can dislike and as always leave a comment whether or not you agree or disagree and i'll see you next time on fast gadgets <music>